All right, today will be the galvanizing compound that will go on the bottom plate of the mini split unit, the 9000 BTU LG unit. I already did the internal panels and this is the panel for or the support for the fan motor. If you've seen in my last videos where the fan motor you could see through the front of the unit. On this, since it was odd and it's upright, it won't be sitting in water. Uh, I just used regular old Rustonium cold galvanizing compound, uh, not too expensive. And I have three coats on here, three coats there, three coats there, and it basically used a whole can. I mean, there may be a half an ounce left at the bottom of this can, that's it. So one entire can, put three coats on these two units, that's it. This will be having water sitting in the bottom of it. So this unit here, where the condenser wraps around right here, when it sweats down and the fog comes through with the ocean spray of the water and stuff like that that's in the air, the salts will be sitting down in the bottom, sit down around the nuts where the screws are, where the heating element goes down and around inside. So all this will be, get a, a more heavy duty industrial gaze uh, type of uh, cold compound and that's this one right here. So remember this, this can weighs 28 pounds. This is some heavy stuff. So to make sure I got all the thick stuff off the bottom, I have my drill on low speed because you don't want to overtax the motor. Just making sure I'm going around, getting it. I already, I already screwed it up a little bit. And that's it on that. And so, just a regular brush. And this will be going here, very simple, not rocket science. And I really don't think you, you guys need to see me spray with the spray can and neither of this. But I just wanted to show you if you're in a salt water location, especially if you're right off the coast, on the ones right off the coast, if you want them to last any amount of time, even ones off the coast. Uh, a lot of guys will see a lot of the air handlers, heat pumps and stuff like that fail in um, roughly less, I've seen some of them less than five years get all eaten up and they look like they're 20, 30 years old. Um, you should be able to do this and get a nice uh, 15, 20 years out of your uh, heat pump down at the coast, right off the coastline. And that's it. Just. Uh, not rocket science and the reason I didn't use the spray can for this I wanted to get more of a coating on here and this stuff in the spray can is kind of ridiculously expensive um, this can here I think was hundred and forty dollars for a gallon which um, is kind of expensive as it is but um, this one has a higher zinc content than the spray cans because you're paying for the propellant. That's a cheaper zinc over there. That's a lower percentage of zinc. And um, I didn't mind putting it because those pieces are sitting up in the air where this piece is down, will be saturated with moisture. So this one will get two to three coats on there. And I am sure on this unit, uh, my grandchild, will be working on this unit. When he starts coming out with me in a couple years, he's two years old right now. So by the time he's about eight years old, he will be out with me on jobs. Just like I was with my grandfather and my father, no difference. And uh, I'll do the same thing with my grandson. And this unit, even though it'll be exposed to salt water in the air, it will not be rusted out when he comes to work on it. And so that's it. I don't have to go over a painting tutorial. It's pretty damn boring. But just show you what I'm using. You could look this product up. It does come in an all aerosol and it does come in a bright shiny. So here you have the bright shiny of the zinc. This is more like zinc that has been aged. So I use this one here, but they do have the bright shiny one. 
into cans. And if you look up this company, uh, you'll see it's rather expensive. And for the amount of solids that you'll be paying for on cans, it is easier and faster. So if you want easier and faster, I'm just doing this because I kind of go overboard on everything, especially when I want it to last. Um, I do this. If it didn't matter that much or only had to be good enough, then I would use this because that's a cheap alternative. Uh, that Rust-Oleum right there. Compared to this right here, this is a high dollar thing. Uh, that's much cheaper and easier and faster to apply. But I have time on this one because I have, this won't be a, it's winter time right now. And this probably won't go up on the roof of that residence until I think this uh, summer, this springtime or summertime when this unit will go up. And until this vertical air handler goes in, this will go in about several months to almost a year before because ducting has to be do, uh, done on that residence, the building. I won't be putting in the central air system that is a vertical upright LG heat pump. This will go in as temporary heat. Well, it'll be permanent and it's going to be ran off of solar too. I'm also doing the solar on that house. I will be hand installing the entire solar system, doing all the electrical doing all the inverter system and all the wiring uh, that will be hooked up to this 9000 BTU on solar panels and battery backup. And this heat pump, which will be 18,000 BTUs. And actually here are the batteries. These are um, Nick, uh, iron phosphate, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, each one of these, these are from A123 and I think eight, each one of these modules are $1,800 a piece. And I have another six over at my other workshop. And um, they were, you could say, factory defects where the control board in here didn't read right. The cells are still good, but it just has an issue. And I'm not using that. I'm rewiring and doing my own BMS uh, battery management system and wiring them up myself. So these will be the iron phosphate battery backup for the solar panels that will be running these two air conditionings on that residence. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.